basically your emotional side can affect your sickle cell. So from my point of view, it's about trying to help people who have sickle cell to manage their emotions and deal with their emotions and the stresses that comes with life in general in terms of how they would cope better and how they would deal with their mood changes on a day-to-day -day basis in order to be able to function and to achieve, whether it's educationally in terms of children or young people, even in terms of university, and in terms of work, having something that defines you as opposed to sickle cell defining you. So I think in a nutshell, I just want to say, think, feel, act. Turn it all around, feel better, think positively as much as possible or realistically, and that would help you to act in terms of what you need to do um, to live with sickle cell disease. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Doctor, just before you leave, um, in your slide you showed the interconnectivity of uh, emotions and actions, you know, and now how we can turn it on its head. But my question, I guess, is um, regardless of how positive that you've, I mean, Anne is possibly one of the most positive people I've met, but in my interaction with her in the past couple of weeks, there's been times when we've made fantastic plans of what we're going to do and deployed a lot of resources, but somewhere in the middle, she got poorly and she couldn't turn up. Yeah. So, regardless of the fact that she was positive, as you can imagine, there are times when you still cannot do something. How, you know, how would you respond to so, that? So, basically, what I'm saying is that um, for a chronic illness like sickle cell disease, we have the physical side and we have the emotional side. The physical side, sometimes, despite whatever you want to do to prevent having pain, having a crisis, you can't do it. But if you're able to, in a way, deal with your emotions, that's why I use the word positive, but as well as realistic. Because sometimes, despite all the positive things that you can do, or whether you want to think positively and not think negatively or whatever, it may not be realistic under the circumstance that you are. So what you want to do is to be able to handle that emotional side. And sometimes as an individual, you need professional help. You need to talk to somebody. Um, and sometimes, even in terms of the support that you get from your family, is, is, um, is, is quite good. So basically, what I want people to think about is that if you think about it, when you are in your worst state, you tend to have more um, pain from the point of view of the experience of the pain. It feels worse. When you are in a better state, the pain can feel a little bit better. But we shouldn't um, disregard the fact that sickle cell disease, sickle cell pain, is a physical thing that has to be dealt with. And sometimes you need very strong, like for example, very strong analgesia to get you over a certain period and then try to get your emotions together to deal with it. Thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Kofi Ani. Thank you, Doctor. I suppose it's all summed up in the book, Living with Pain, Finding Joy. I guess it's all about uh, how you manage your emotions. So moving on uh, swiftly, like uh, for those who've read Anne's book, she did say this isn't just for sufferers of sickle cell, it's for people living with invisible illness, people whose illness is not obvious on sight. I was reading a, uh, um, I had the pleasure of interviewing Anne recently, and she spoke about people giving her the evil look, the evil stare when they see her packed at a disabled uh, uh, parking space. Looking all glamorous in her Gucci. <laughs> Looking all glamorous in her Gucci and designer gear. And then parking in a disabled bag. Then, you know, it looks go kill. And she feels like saying, listen, I can barely walk. You know, like my mother literally just left here with my wheelchair. Like, you know, 
but because you don't say it, you judge these people, you know, out to their trouble, which is really painful, you know. But moving on, at this point, please help me welcome a young man who, like uh, Anne, has what you would call an invisible illness, but, you know, soldiering through like a warrior. Please help me welcome Harold Enoch. A big round of applause for Harold. This gentleman right here is all personality, so I'm just going to let him do him. <laughs> today, uh, today I will speak about um, overcoming challenges and finding meaning. And me growing up with pain and, you know, burning through the asthma, so uh, the world I was with, I was in actually, there was a lot of kids with sickle cell, cancer, and they were my age, like eight, seven, and some of them, you know, they're playing their toys, you know, smiling positively, and the other half, they were depressed. And for me as well, I was the other half, you know, feeling low. And my whole childhood, I've been battling with pain. And I can't call it childhood, because, you know, there's so much pain. And I didn't find, I didn't have no meaning or purpose. And I thought to myself, what's the point of life in general? There's no point of life when there's, when, you, when you're growing up and my whole childhood, that, that was it really. And two, three years ago, I was in, I was, I was in mm. hospital, and this nurse came up to me and spoke to me, had a long conversation. And she was telling me of how um, there's other people in the world that are suffering the same as me. How there's other people in the world having got some of the tables water to drink. And that made me think so much about vanity and, and life in general. And me, I was a typical, I was a typical boy, I want to be a footballer. But <laughs> that's not gonna happen. Right. I was fucked, but after a few seconds I'll be running out of breath. <laughs> but yeah, then um, my my business teacher she gave me a book on marketing and then I read, you know, how to make money profitable and how to how to invest and I was so into business. I was so into business. Then from there my uncle after getting admitted, my uncle took me on a trip to Paris. And um, I ran into a jewelry supplier, had a conversation, and then I shipped a few jewelry back to London. <laughs> yeah, then because my school, my high school back then, it was, it was in a rich area, and half the kids there was spoiled. They were spoiled, Brad. <laughs> so I said, why not, why not use that to my advantage? <laughs> <laughs> I blew them with the jewelry. <laughs> the girls be going to parties and saying, Oh, I bought the dress, I bought my eyelashes, I bought my hair. <laughs> and, and you'll see a little four foot three in there saying, Now, nah, you know what? You're missing the necklace, you're missing the earrings. <laughs> they was kind of cheek at me, but yeah, I sold out all my jewelry. Yeah, I sold out all my jewelry in the first few days. And then, it wasn't, what made me happy it wasn't just, you know, being able to make the money or being able to fly out abroad. It was the fact that I could actually feel like a normal boy and, you know, be happy doing what I love the most. And obviously in life there's always people that hate on you and doubt you and think, well, you're 13, your main priority should be education. You should be reading your books. But I said, my books is Martin. I only, <laughs> I only do what makes me happy. And back then I was 13 and my business teacher, he said, when the 11 are doing their GCSEs, you stay at the back and, you know, you read through some questions. And she made me watch The Apprentice by Adam Sugar. And I got so inspired by, you know, the way he was running things and how, how he was so firm. And that inspired me, you know, that just inspired me and it motivated me to do better for myself. And yeah, so that helped me find my, my, my purpose, my meaning, doing what I love the most. But all the kids were going now, you know, partying. I was in at home reading my books. I was there thinking, well, how can I leave a legacy behind me? I always thought to myself my whole life, if I die one day, what can I leave behind? And I thought to myself in hospital, Michael Jackson died. You, my little sister, when she was born, that's when he died, and she still know who he is. I wasn't alive when Muhammad Ali was ISP, but I still know who he is. And now I realized <laughs> those who got something in common, even though they're in a different domain, is the fact that they're unique and they talking about them was different. They had that positive light within them. And I thought, you know what, I need to find my life. 
No one else in my borough is 13 and is and is into business. Why can't I be? If if all these if all these entrepreneurs made it, like why can't I? What's different about me? Am I not human? So that's me finding my purpose. And now overcoming the challenges, being in hospital for a month, you know, not even be going out for something small as fresh air. I said, how can I keep a, a positive life? How can I, how can I be positive mentally? And you know, it's about finding that distraction. It's about finding, being grateful for what you do have, not what you haven't got. Although I was going through the worst pains, I was thinking, okay, let me find a way to put that smile on my face. Because if I, if there's no smile on my face, there won't be a smile on mom's face or my sister's face. That's fine. Wow. wow. Ladies and gentlemen, a big round of applause. One more time, one more time, one more time. Yeah. Yeah. Well done, well done. Legend. That's all I can say, legend. Oh. I mean, that's so inspiring. Am I the only one? No. I think you probably have a career as a motivational speaker. <laughs> you can do that on the side after selling the jewelry. <laughs> wow, wonderful. One more time, Hassan. Now, um, one of the characteristics of single cell is it doesn't tell you when it's about to hit you. Yeah. I remember a chapter in Anne's book, she described it as a aha moment. 20,000 feet in the air, an opportunity of a lifetime with the president of Nigeria, and this nasty illness decides to strike of all times. I personally, even though it didn't happen to me, I was teed off. Like, why would you happen at a time like that? Now, there's a young lady who was part of this event. She was supposed to be a speaker. Everything yeah. had been planned. She was meant to be here today. And then she fell ill this morning. So please, I want us to have a, a round of applause for Sienna King. She's supposed to be here. She's not here, but her mom is here on our behalf. So please help me welcome Hayley King. I've had no sleep and feeling slightly fragile. Um, but the importance of being here and supporting Anne was high on my list of things to do today. Um, and I think Sienna falling ill this morning shows the spontaneity and the severity of sickle cell, sadly. Um, she had a little outfit already to do her speech today and is currently laying in a hospital bed on walking and a drink. Um, so basically we met Anne because I started a charity in 2012 and we are based in Reading and in that area there is no support networks at all for people with sickle cell. Um, and the older Sienna got, the more sickle cell affected her sadly. Um, in 2017 Sienna had to have emergency surgery to remove her spleen. Um, I don't want to go too in depth with the biology of sickle cell but it causes so many complications and it is absolutely horrific and seeing a child particularly as a parent you know we always feel like we want to take away the children's pain and if they're ill, we want to comfort them. But when it comes to sickle cell, there is absolutely nothing you can do other than be there for them. Um, and I'm so grateful that Anne has shone some light on sickle cell because we are battling every day trying to explain, um, I don't know who it was that was saying about it being an invisible illness. You know, if you see Sienna, she looks like the most normal child um, you just you you couldn't believe that she has this debilitating illness. She's happy, she's positive, and as you were saying earlier, you know about having meetings with Anne. I believe that Sienna's crisis today has been brought on. Um, she's in year six um, of primary school, and they're currently rehearsing for their year six end of year production, and she was so adamant to get the main part and she rehearsed day and night she's been the whole family know all of the lines and all of the songs where she has been just 
going full force and she's put herself under so much pressure that sadly this is what happens when it comes to sickle cell. Stress and um, pressure all can, are all triggers and um, I am so grateful to be here and I'm glad that I finally made it and I just, if anyone, just please read Anne's book because having an insight into this illness is crucial to those people suffering from it. It is one of the most common genetic illnesses globally, not just in the UK, globally. And it is heartbreaking when I speak to people and they say, oh, what's sickle cell? You know, I've never heard of it. Um, she looks fine. You know, she doesn't really fit the profile of somebody who's severely, severely ill. Um, so just giving yourselves a few minutes um, to either look up some facts about it or reading Anne's book, you know, those suffering from it are so appreciative and it's all about, we, they don't want sympathy. They don't want you to look at them like they're suffering. They just want you to understand the, the challenges that they face because of this. Um, and it, yeah, it's all down to empathy. They don't want to be seen as, you know, disabled or anything like that. They just want you to say when they're in pain, they mean it. You know, Sienna says her pain is described as being constantly punched in the same places for days and days on end. And for for any child or adult, that is horrific to, to witness. Um, so I'm very grateful that you're all here supporting Anne. She is she really deserves it. Um, and I hope you all walk away knowing a few more facts about Sickle Girl. Thank you. Thank you so much. And uh, send our love to Sienna. Tell her we love her. Thank you. Sienna, everybody. So, um, there's a reason why we're sat in a cinema auditorium. Excuse the fact that we have no popcorn or candies, but you've had alcohol, so you should be fine. Oh, okay. Can we have the first film, please? Hi, uh, my name is Anne Walsh. I am a mother. I am a businesswoman and most importantly, I mean, which really affects me and I've been advocating for it. I'm a sickle cell sufferer and a strong advocate for it. Because this is not just a book about my suffering. Each, at the end of each chapter, I write what you can do to overcome those things. Like I could have done better in school at the beginning of my life if I knew certain things, if someone had told me. But one thing the book is very, very, very clear about is that it's living with pain and finding joy. So, because the book is aware that I will always have this chronic illness. It's not about I we will overcome the pain because until there's a cure, I can never guarantee I will overcome this pain. But what the book is out there is to tell people, find ways to overcome pain and find joy along the way. And with the book, I said, I just don't want to stop at this book. I want to go into the next level. And I want to work in Africa, for example, where there's lots of people, more people with sickle cell anemia, and they're dying needlessly. I was first diagnosed um, with sickle cell disorder at the age of 11. Well, I was diagnosed with sickle cell at age 11 when I fell sick. It was not really a major sickness. I just felt, came down with malaria and I went to, um, we were at Portacot then. And I went to, actually I was, my sister was the one with the issue because she normally converse. So we went there and she was tested, a genotype was given and the doctor was like, how about your other daughter, let's test her. And I was also down with malaria and they needed to transfuse. So that was when they knew I was, I was a sickler. I was diagnosed at the age of two. 
I presented with swollen hands and feet and uh, my mother was worried because such a thing had never happened to me before. My, according to her, my temperature was very high, but she was more worried. My temperature was always high, but she was worried on that day when she found that my hands and feet were swollen. I started shouting. My head, my leg, everywhere. I couldn't even say this is it. And my mom was worried. The next thing they could do is just to carry me to one herbalist very uh, close. And I, all I knew is that I was, the only way I could describe it for them is that my, 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 my breath is leaving me. So I was shouting in Yoruba, what's in more point me, me low? What's in more point me, me low? So they were all donating blood. My husband, they told him not to come to the blood bank again, that he has donated enough. So there was a particular day on the Saturday afternoon that I went to the blood bank with different canola all over my sister because being a fleshy woman, to locate a day is always very tough. So I have a flat bag, sticks here, 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 and here. All of them. So if this one is not going, this one will go. If this is not true, this one will true. So I have to leave my bed with the hospital gown and go to the lab. Because the lab guy said no. Ah, how come? Is she the only one? She has been taking so much blood here. This is her eighth one. And this is that. Okay. I went to the lab. I left the bed. The emergency bed went to the lab. I saw the guy. Bros, what happened now? I need this. If I don't need it, do you think uh, I will not be asked to take it? After all, my people are donating it back. He said, ah, oh girl, this vampire has come again. Must you always take blood? Are you the only person in the lab? I was pissed. Right? Maybe my hormones or maybe I was born in Italy. I can't tell that very really, but I flare up. I took it off upon the, upon the, I was so angry. I told the guy, do you think it's easy to live with sickle cell and be carrying pregnancy up and down? I'm single. I'm single. I'm not married. Um, why? Because so many of the sweeters that, that came, once they found out that, oh, this is your genotype. That's why they found out, they were asking, oh, let's go to the hospital to do the test together. That's why they found out, we'll do the test together. They will see my own, they will see their own. They will see back up at the end of the day. So this has, this has been a, a real problem for me, even up to now. A teacher, he was new to the school. He wanted to um, beat my entire class for making noise. And the, I always sat in front because I, I was small in stature, I was short. So if you put me at the back, I wouldn't really see what was going on in front. So I always sat at the front. And he wanted to start with me. And the other class was like, no, 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 should we die, should we die, should we die? Touch her. And I was, I felt bad. I remember crying home that how can people say I would die and all of that. I work doing work for people with sickle cell and hopefully work towards a cure. I think it's so important for me because I think I don't want a child who's five years old to go for it. It's too painful. I want to remember, look back and say, people to look back and say, yeah, and Walsh really stood and really did make it, make it stand on sickle cell. Because, you know, people with sickle cell, they're normal people. They're, they're people that you meet every day. They're strong, they're brave, they're smart, they're very loving. But it's just that they have that little thing that sometimes they're sick. But I want people to remember them and think positively about them and don't forget that, oh, I won't marry that person because the person is sick. No. So I want to be a very strong advocate for people with sickle cell. I want my kids to look back and say, mommy really did try on that side. I want people with sickle cell, chronic illness, mental health, to understand that more about sickle cell and understand that even though sickle cell is very serious illness, we could live and find joy along the way.
one more time, everyone. One more time. I think that meant you enjoyed that. Right? I mean, I don't know. It had a bit of everything in it, didn't it? A bit of action, a bit of comedy, a bit of drama. I think the one that stood out for me was a fleshy woman. <laughs> Don't you just love Niger women? <laughs> okay, so, uh, ladies and gentlemen, boss lady. A round of applause for Kevin. She's running the show. So, please, uh, could you, uh, lovely guest here, could you please find a place to sit? There's enough chair for everybody. Let's make it uh, cozy. Oh, okay. You can, you can come this way as well, please. You can come down and just make your way around. There's a lot of space at the back as well. Guys, could you come this way? It's easier through the front. So, while that's happening, um, I'm going to introduce to you another gentleman uh, who has known Anne for a while. Because uh, you know, like, we've been talking all day about managing sickle cell, having the right support, the right medical support. Because it's a kind of illness where you have to be proactive about it. You really have to be on the bottom. So there's this network of support that Anne relies on, but more importantly, there's this gentleman I'm about to introduce, who uh, is at the heart of everything. He's Anne's personal doctor, and he's been looking after her for a long time. Please help me welcome Professor Porter. A big round of applause for Professor Porter. He's just gonna, he's gonna tell us one or two things looking after her. We want, we want all the details. <laughs> Well, I'll try to spare some of the details. Um, it's a great privilege to look after Anne, and she's a hero, and she's been troubled with quite severe sickle cell disease, and though she makes light of it, she's really risen to the task of writing this book and being an advocate for sickle. Uh, and we need advocates for sickle cell disease because although it's the commonest genetic disease in the UK, there's a general lack of awareness and we need to improve that, we need to increase that. And uh, Anne's definitely done that. She's had a very challenging journey uh, with her children and uh, trying to get through pregnancy, even though we haven't always been able to find blood. Uh, it's been really challenging. Um, but she's, she's risen, she's done a, a great job. I, I think you've had um, lectures or discussion groups about sickle cell disease today, so I don't think I need to tell you about sickle cell disease again, but it does cause very severe pain. It's like having a heart attack only in your bones and different places all the time. And so managing that pain is a real challenge with respect to opiates uh, or other uh, painkillers. And uh, a lot of people have great difficulty in dealing with that, but Anne's dealt very, very well with it. So it's been a real privilege looking after her, and I congratulate her on a fantastic book and on this great reception today. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Professor Porter, everybody. And uh, talking about network of support, let us meet the woman who has been on this journey from day one. Anne's beautiful mother. Mommy, please stand up for recognition. Please thank you her. Thank you so much for coming. Look at her, isn't she radiant? <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna let you in, in a little secret. So when I met Anne, um, Oh, sorry, I forgot to introduce myself at the beginning. <laughs> so I'm a, jo I'm a journalist, okay? So I work for the BBC World Service. And uh, we wanted to interview Anne by the virtue of our book because we're going to uh, run the, run the uh, item today on our radio program. So she came. 
and then she introduced me to her mother. Mm. What she didn't tell me was that she doubled as a personal assistant, a photographer, a, and a videographer. So all through the interview, she was taking pictures, selfies, filming, with Aunt giving instructions, mommy, get the angles right. Mommy, get the frame. Mommy, capture my microphone, take it, whoa, okay. A round of applause one more time for mommy. Please indulge me. I also want to introduce Anne's beautiful sisters. They are right here as well. There's some good genes in that family, isn't it? I mean, look at them. They look like glamour models. A round of applause. And last but not the least, behind every successful woman, there's a man. A couple of days ago was Father's Day. Okay, so let us acknowledge our men as well. A round of applause for Mr. Welsh. How are you, sir? He's very gentle, he likes to be in the background. We appreciate you, thank you so much. How about another video? Okay, I'm going to play it anyway. Shall we? Marhaban. اسمي زكريا إبراهيم الكاظم رئيس جمعية البحرين لرعاية مرضى السكلر 46 عاما ولدت بفقر الدم المنجلي وأعاني من آلام شديدة لا أستطيع وصفها أبدا خضعت لعمليات عدة منها استبدال مفصلي الحوض صافحت الموت 11 مرة وفي كل مرة يكتب لي النجاة كان الله يمنحني يوما آخر لأعيش لأحقق ما ولدت وخلقت من أجله أمثل أكثر من تسعة آلاف مريض البحرين يعيشون مع آلام سيكلر لقد سمعت الأطباء يقولون لوالدي أنني لن أعيش حتى سن الثامنة عشر لكنني عشت ثم كرروا ذلك على مسامعي بأنني لن أشهد عيد ميلادي الثاني والأربعين حاليا أنا ستة وأربعين لكنني وعدت عائلتي الصغيرة أنني سأعيش حتى سن الخامسة والسبعين سأعيشها وأملأها سعادة وسأملأها نجاح كثير من الآباء والأمهات والأزواج وحتى المرضى أنفسهم فقدوا الأمل في البقاء وكانوا يمضون يومهم كأنه اليوم الأخير من حياتهم غير مدركين أنهم قد استسلموا ورفعوا راية الاستسلام كيف لا ونحن نشاهد كثير من زملائنا يغادروننا الحياة ويخسرون حربهم ضد المرض يخسرون وظائفهم يخسرون شركائهم في الحياة يخسرون حتى أصدقائهم لقد أصيبوا بخيبة أمل وأنا كذلك في مرات عدة إنه قدرنا الذي كان يسخر منا كيف لا وهم يرون أنفسهم بعيدون كل البعد عن كل أسباب النجاح وكأن النجاح ليس من نصيبنا وكان الخيارات أمامنا إما الموت وإما الفشل قامت المحاربة الليدي آن سميث بكتابة كتاب بينلس لم يتسنى لي الحصول على نسختي بعد أو قراءة محتوى ولكنني ذهبت وقرأت نبذة عن محتوى هذا الكتاب كان لدى الليدي سميث الكثير من الأسباب لكي تفشل لكنها اختارت لنفسها أن تنجح حقها كل يوم وتحطم معها أحلامها التي كانت ترتجي أن تتحقق كانت تعاني وتشاهد الموت كما نشاهدنا لقد اختارت الانتصار على الهزيمة لقد اختارت الحياة على الموت لقد اختارت السعادة على أن تحزن لقد اختارت أن تشرق أن ترتفع على أن يضمحل نورها 
اختارت محاربة المرض واختارت سلاحه أيضا اختارت القلم لتكتب لنا قصتها الجميلة إنها فكرة شجاعة جدا أن تتحدث عن معاناتك أن تتحدث عن ما مررت فيه أن تلهم الآخرين لتقول لهم لستم وحدكم لقد كنا هنا في يوم ما إذا اختار شخص منا أن يذهب في رحلة فإنه يختار رفيق أو يختار خارطة طريق تساعده على أن يتخطى هذه الرحلة وأن تكون ممتعة أما هذه الرحلة فهي رحلة غير سعيدة لا يوجد فيها إلا الأوجاع والخوف والرجاء الكتاب كان عبارة عن نيفيجيشن يساعد المرضى في الحصول على السلام يخبرهم كيف يتخطون اليوم السيء لصالح اليوم السعيد لقد كانت تقول لنا أن اليوم السيء سيمضي وسيأتي اليوم السعيد هي تحاول أن ترشدك في رحلتك ضد الألم وأن تريك طريق النجاة تريد أن تقول لك كنا هنا مررنا من هنا نعم كان يوما مؤلم كانت تجربة قاسية لكننا نشزناها هي خريطة الطريق لهذه الرحلة الصعبة كل شخص فينا هو شخص شجاع هو شخص ملهم لكن أنا اختارت أن تبادر في كتابة قصتها أن تخبر العالم بأنها لم تكن لتنجح لكنها نجحت لم تكن لتنجو لكنها نجت إنها تخبرك وتمنحك الدعم النفسي والعاطفي في رحلتك الصعبة شعور مريح أن تشعر أن هنالك شخص يرافقك طوال الطريق في كتاب بين لس سوف يكون مرشدك في رحلتك القادمة المحطات كثيرة في حياتنا في الطفولة أيام المراهقة تحدياتنا في المدارس في الجامعة في الحصول على وظيفة في الحصول على شريك حياة كانت تساعدنا في كل مرحلة أن نتخطاها وتعلمنا بعض الحيل التي يمكن للآباء أو للمريض أن يتعلمها ليجتاز تلك الآلام إنها تشاركنا تجربتها الخاصة من خلال قصتها إنها تساعدنا على أن نرفع إشارة النصر من أجر دحر هذا الآلام ودحر هذا هذا المرض لصالح الحياة ولصالح السعادة ختاما أنا أشكر ليدي آن سميث على إتاحتها الفرصة لي أن أشكرها نيابة عن مرضى الشرق الأوسط الذين يعانون من آلام مرض فقر الدم المنجلي شكرا لك Lady Anne Smith, <laughs> warrior Lady Anne Smith. I think it's about time we make this Lady Anne Smith in official. Does anybody have the links to Buckingham Palace so we need to speak to them? Right. Um, ladies and gentlemen, we have come to that time while we're here to hear from the horse's mouth, so to speak. But at this point, 